The miners did it. They had a train up American Fork Canyon, and they also had a gondola that ran from Snowbird's private property down towards Tibble Fork Reservoir. So it's been done before, and uh, we'd like to, for it to be considered through this process and see if it's a good fit for our community. Thank you. You wanted to give Utah County people more opportunities to recreate in the mm -hmm. canyon. And you know, one of the fears that people have, frankly, is, is a gondola going from the Twins or going you know, from Mary Ellen down to above Tibble Fork Reservoir. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, is that, is that so something I think that I think that Snowbird put it on the table as an idea to consider. If people think it's a good idea, then I think we ought to take a look at it. I think if people go, we hate that, then, then I don't think we ought to look at it. But I think we ought to put, it's, a, it's one of many ideas, and I think we ought to consider it. What, you know, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I hate the idea. One of the, one of the challenges there is that you're budding wilderness land. There's roadless, two or three miles of roadless land at the top. I mean, some of the most beautiful area in the central Wasatch and you don't have that viewscape problem. I mean, a gondola in there totally changes the character. And, and my, I mean, I'm a resort skier and backcountry skier. My problem is that once a resort gets a lift access, I mean, to the point I've heard, you know, you don't see four-wheel drives, you don't see private user groups frequently going in ski terrain, and especially in the winter. And so that, you know, there's some drainage there that's taken away from backcountry users um, in, in basically in a 40-year increment and whatever extension the resort gets for a special use permit because that's a lot of public land that potentially is impacted in that and that's where I think people in the community need to get aware that uh, it could really change the character of the canyon if that were to happen. Right. And I appreciate your opinion and I think it's, you know, if, if it turns out that, that our community, your community, uh, think that it's, that it's a bad idea, then, then I think we ought to not do it. Okay, one other question I had was that, that the zoning uh, went from CE1 to CE2. Are there, are there ask, I mean, mountain land, you know, we've all seen Deer Valley, you know, million dollar lots plus, you know, acreage in mountain areas, ski in, ski out is very valuable. Is there a vision where there is some housing in, in this area that's for sale and becomes available to people who want to pay the big uh, seven figure amounts? You know, I, I think that um, I think that that's part of the discussion. You know, I think you know some of the properties that that we have here, um, you know, might be that might be an opportunity to do that. We can put lifts in in you know Mary Ellen Gulch. You know, so a lot of that can happen regardless of what happens here with uh, additional Forest Service land. And does doesn't the the Mountain Accord also give you? property in the upper elevation of the Twin Peaks in, Correct. in Mary Ellen, so that... Correct. Uh, so is there a plan then, in order to use that land in Mary Ellen, you would need an access from the upper elevations. Um, does it bring the gondola from Hidden to Twin Peak back into play if Mountain Accord goes through? Is that something that Snowbird would be pursuing? Not to Twin Peaks, but it is possible to put something across the top uh, from Hidden Peak over to... Uh, you know the far side of again on our private property on the other side and, and we don't we don't need forest service land to do that either to be honest with you we can do that from hidden peak over to the far side of mary ellen gulch on our private property the proposal was initially made to the state legislature a couple of years ago or a year ago to to fund a research um, into seeing how how feasible it would be to put a, a gondola into to uh, american fork canyon um, I'm just wondering um, how this American Fork Vision, uh, Mountain Accord, how did all these, these things get funded? Did that get all funded by the state? Are there, are there private groups, you included, that are funding some of that? Well, I, I would like you to clarify. Um, I don't think anybody, you know, provided funding uh, to see if, you know, to, for Snowbird to build a, a gondola in American Fork Canyon. My understanding was that that was presented to the state legislature and they agreed to fund $100,000 for a impact study, feasibility study for that. No. No. Okay. 
talking about the American Fork uh, gondola. Welcome. Time is yours. Thank you to the chairs and the committee for your indulgence in granting us some time. This is a $500,000 ask. If any of you have been to American Fork Canyon, it's an amazing resource that includes Timpanogos National Cave Monument as well as Timpano Mount Timpanogos and Tibble Fork. It's a beautiful area. If you've never been there, I strongly recommend that you go there. Um, have, what have your discussions been with uh, UTA for um, access up and down that canyon? Great question. I appreciate that. So, um, at this point, they have said if there is if if there's demand, they want to help um, getting it up there, getting people up the, up up the, up the canyon. So um, we saw we spoke last week with the with the d director of UTA, and so he says we're in the business of transporting people, whether it be by train, by bus, by car, bicycle, or even by gondola or whatever it is. That's what they're in the business of doing. So they're committed to trying to figure out what is the best way to get people up and down the canyon in the most effective way. My understanding is that you need to do an environmental impact study to even see what the best options might be. That's correct. Has there been any discussion about the interlinking aspect of the ski resorts up uh, through multiple canyons, not just up uh, American Fork Canyon in your discussions? Yes. And so, um, you know, I'm from Salt Lake, so I'm f familiar with all the Salt Lake resorts a lot. And so... Um, to a great extent, Snowbird and Alta are already linked, and so you can and ski that. And so I know that Snowbird's talked about for probably close to 10 years of coming over the mountain and creating more terrain and access um, in the American Fort Canyon area. And so if we can get the private sector to help, help us figure this out, I think that's terrific. So is there any, uh, are you aware of any obstacles to private land and or uh, environmentally sensitive areas up there that uh, may impact this? Right. And so um, a lot of the land um, on the east side is actually in private hands. Snowbird owns a lot of land up there. And so um, for argument's sake, let's say that there was a gondola that would take you from Tibble Fork up to the top. And so that would go across what's called wilderness as opposed to roadless. So the Forest Service said there's not a problem in terms of where, it's, where, it's, where, where it's, it's, it could possibly go. Okay. So the Forest Service thinks this is a great idea up to this point. Everyone is saying this is certainly worthy of study. No one is saying this is going to happen and this is how it's going to happen. We just, we, we just know that we've got issues that are facing us in 10 to 15 years, and if we don't deal with them sooner than later, we're going to have a real problem in terms of this beautiful canyon, which we all recognize, and preserving it, yet allowing people to go up and recreate and really enjoy it. So... Well, I'm, for one, I like the idea. I, I'd love to open up Utah County to all those ski resorts, but uh, we mean you're doing the right step. We need to make sure that we do this the right way. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, we, we really view this as a game changer for Utah, for Utah County. We have one re, um, ski resort, which we all love, but um, wouldn't it be terrific to have two? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think you just answered my question. Uh, I was going to ask you, what is up there? Uh, I'm not familiar with it. Is there a ski resort up there? Well, ski, um, <clears throat> there are ski, 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 ski resorts certainly on the Salt Lake side. There, and then you can ski over in Mineral, Mineral Basin on the Snowbird side. And so we don't know how this is going to shake out, Representative. All we know is it's worthy of study. And if we can get the, the public, I mean, excuse the private sector to help us solve this problem, I love that idea. Private public sectors, I think, are a good way to think, and that's the way that we're trying to think as well. But say in the summertime, is there is it a place where people go to picnic and Absolutely. so forth? Absolutely. Yeah, this is, we're talking about year-round recreation. We're not talking about winter recreation. So American Fort Canyon has some of the best terrain that you'll see. So people they, that'll go up there to mountain bike, to hike, to fish, to, you know, just go up there for a picnic. There's, there's a ton of recreational op um, opportunities that aren't just in the wintertime, but it's actually year-round recreation. Thank you. The other nope. consideration that I'd add to that is just the reality of the entertainment value of riding over this land and looking around at it all. For those of us that may not mountain bike, hike, or horseback ride in the area, and it's an environmentally safe and protected fashion, electrical, transport, it doesn't touch the ground, the people can use without destroying the property, which is... So if you get the, the general concept as we do these environmental studies is that long-term... We're looking to utilize these lands in a safe and appropriate fashion so that all benefit without damage to, the, to these vital areas. So the proposal is that of a, a public, what you're looking at is a public-private 
partnership where the state does get involved with uh, a public or a private partner of some sort? Are we talking UTA yes. or uh, UT? Well, I think I think you have a lot of parties involved. Certainly, UTA UTA is going to is going to have to be involved. UDOT's going to have to be involved. The Park Service is going to have to be involved. So is the Forest Service. They're all stakeholders. And, and all of the um, Utah counties have a vested interest in making sure this happens correctly. So there's a lot of, a lot of people. So I, I think that, that you know, part of the um, outreach over the next year is really getting the public to understand um, or, or actually express what they, what they want to do. I mean, it's their, it's their, um, their land, okay. and so we should be able to figure that out. And so thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments from committee? Seeing none, Representative, does that uh, conclude your presentation? Would you like to wrap up? There's two ways to do things, top-down versus bottom-up. This is a bottom-up approach. We seek these funds for the primary opportunity to solicit input from the public and find out how they want to use those lands, how we can do that in a safe fashion. And, and this is a, a chance for us to look forward and actually be proactive in protecting our lands. So the, the second thing that we're asking for the funds for is NEPA study environmental impact aspects so that as we move forward on public use of these lands, that we're actually doing so in an environmentally protective fashion. So with that, thank you very much for your time and indulgence. Thank you for your presentation. Appreciate you being with us this Pleasure. afternoon. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Chairman's members. Yes, Bob. I guess my concern kind of with these other people here is these 416 acres that are being swapped, those are forest lands right now, correct? So those are accessible to us to recreate in. These 400 acres, 16 acres, they would pretty much make all your properties connect, right? And so that kind of patchwork that we talked about back in the, the commission office about properties kind of scattered wilderness here and private owners here, that kind of diminishes, okay? So I think that's what the concern is, is for a lot of us here. Suddenly, we had this forest land that was over here in Utah County. Now suddenly it's being traded to you guys. We don't have any say. A vote's coming up next month, whether it's going to happen. We're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, please hear us. That's one of the concerns. Another point I wanted to make is you mentioned you're going to provide these recreational opportunities. We already have those there. That's the big thing. We all mountain bike there. We hike there. We fish there. We hunt there. We take our four-wheelers and our Jeeps up there. We already have that there, and it's free. It's commerce-free. And our concern is once it gets commercialized, you own this land, I have yet to see a resort that's going to let me take my, my truck up there on the resort or anything like that. A mountain biking, they will, but I got to pay. You know, pay a fee. Do I want to take an ATV? Oh, well, you can, but now you got you to pay our, our guide. He's going to take you up and get behind me and follow me what I do. You follow what I'm saying? And horseback riding the same thing. You want to go on a snowmobiling trip? Pay our fee and we'll take you on there. So that's kind of what I see happening. It just seems like American Fork Canyon is kind of like the last jewel for us because everything is developed. Big Cottonwood, Little Cottonwood, Park City, the Canyons, Deer Valley. They're a beautiful place. I'm a skier. I'm a big ski resort skier and a backcountry skier. But it's like American Fork Canyon is like the only place you can go that doesn't have lift towers, doesn't have commerce, doesn't have you have to buy tickets, and just doesn't have that. It's kind of a view shed. You follow me? It's just kind of wilderness. And then that's my big concern is when it gets commercialized, developed, the chair goes in there, whatever. It becomes commercialized, the access diminishes, you have to pay to recreate. But you know what? Recreation should be free. It's forest land. It's there for us to enjoy. That's what we enjoy about it. I don't really have a re reply to that. 